Welcome to another deep dive with us. We are taking a look at a very uh, unique plant today. Yeah. We're talking about the corpse flower, and uh, you know it's it's famous for its smell as it is for its size. Absolutely. Uh, and we are going to find out what researchers at Dartmouth College have uncovered about this botanical wonder in their recent study published in PNAS Nexus. Yeah, it's really fascinating how everything about the corpse flower, um, you know, the gigantic size, mm -hmm. the rare blooms, right, even the way it heats itself up, um, it's all part of this strategy for attracting pollinators. Yeah, it really does make you think, how could this plant evolve to be so theatrical? Yeah. Uh, but before we get into the science, can you just give us a quick overview of the corpse flower? Like, what makes it so unusual? The corpse flower, or Titan arum, is uh, it's actually not a single flower. Okay. It's a cluster of smaller flowers hidden inside this giant stalk called a spadix. Hmm. And that stalk can grow up to 12 feet tall. Wow, 12 feet tall. It's truly a sight to behold. That's taller than most ceilings. It sounds more like a tree than a flower. Yeah. And to make things even more bizarre, uh, the spadix actually heats itself up, <gasps> sometimes as much as 20 degrees Fahrenheit above the surrounding temperature. No way. Yeah, it's called thermogenesis. Mm. It's a process that we usually associate with animals, not plants. Yeah. You know, now that you mentioned the heat, I think we need to address the, well, the corpse in the room, so to speak. Right. The smell. Yeah. Why on earth does this plant go to such great lengths to smell like death? Well, you know, that smell is the key to the corpse flower's reproductive success. Hmm. So think about what's attracted to the smell of decay. Okay. Flies, beetles, all sorts of insects that play a crucial role in pollination. Oh, right. So the corpse flower is essentially mimicking a decomposing animal hmm. to lure in those insects and ensure the continuation of its species. So it's a master of deception. Yeah. Now, it's not just the smell, right? The researchers at Dartmouth were looking at a specific corpse flower named Morphe. What made this particular plant so interesting to study? Well, Morphe is a 21-year-old Titan Arum. Wow. And what's really challenging about studying these plants is that they bloom very infrequently. Okay. And each bloom is incredibly short-lived. Wow. So it gives scientists a very limited window to collect data. So it's like every bloom is a race against time for these researchers. Exactly. And what did they find when they started to uh, dissect literally uh, the secrets of Morphe's stench? They discovered this whole symphony of compounds working together to create that infamous smell. Hmm. And uh, remember the spathe, that frilly petal-like part that surrounds the spadix? Yeah. It's deep red, almost like rotting flesh. Right. And it turns out that it plays a key role in producing that odor. So it's like a multi-sensory experience for these pollinators. Yeah. The visual cue combined with this powerful aroma. Absolutely. So what about the actual chemistry of the smell? How did the researchers break down the components of that putrid perfume? Well, they started by looking at the genes that were active during the blurm okay. using a technique called RNA sequencing. Mm. Think of it as a way to see which of the plant's instructions are being turned on and off. Oh. When the plant starts to heat up and release the odor. So it's like they were able to decode the plants secret language right. to understand how it creates the stench. Exactly. Yeah. And what they found was uh, was pretty remarkable. Okay. First, they discovered that genes related to alternative oxidases were highly active, mm. particularly in the appendix, which mm. is the topmost part of the spadix. Okay. And these genes are usually associated with heat production in animals. Really? Yeah, it seems like the corpse flower has evolved use a similar mechanism. So wait a minute, the plant has essentially hijacked a process that's normally found in animals to create its own internal furnace. Right. That's a pretty big deal in the plant world. So what about the actual smelly compounds? Did they find anything surprising there? Absolutely. They dug deeper and found that there were high levels of methionine yeah. in the tissues of the plant. Uh, methionine is a sulfur-containing amino acid. It's yeah. one of the building blocks of proteins. Mm. And it has a very pungent odor, especially when it's heated. Ah, so that explains the sulfurous element of the smell. Right. But that wasn't the whole story, was it? There was another more unexpected ingredient in this botanical cocktail of death. Yeah, and this is where it gets really intriguing. Okay. They found high levels of another compound. Uh, it's a precursor to something called putrescine. Putrescine. That sounds a bit, well, sinister. Yeah. What is that exactly? It's um, It's an organic compound that's actually found in decaying animal flesh. Okay. 
Uh, it's one of the things that gives rotting meat its characteristic smell. So the corpse flower isn't just mimicking the smell of death. It's actually producing one of the same compounds that's found in decomposing animals. Right. Wow, that's taking this whole deception strategy to a whole new level. Exactly. And what makes this discovery even more significant is that this is the first time putrescine has ever been found in a plant. Really? Wow, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, it really challenges our assumptions about what plants are capable of. Uh-huh. You know, we, th we tend to think of them as passive organisms. Yeah. But this research is showing us that they can be incredibly complex. Right, great. And even a bit sneaky. Absolutely. The corpse flower is a prime example of how plants have evolved these sophisticated strategies to manipulate their environment and ensure their survival. All right. And this study goes beyond just identifying the compounds that create the smell. Okay. It's actually providing insights into the genetic mechanisms that drive these processes. Yeah, that's what I find so fascinating about this research. Yeah. It's not just about one weird plant. Right. It's about what this plant can teach us about the plant kingdom as a whole. Precisely. Uh, the discovery of those alternative oxidase genes, for example, right. the ones that are involved in heat production, yeah. suggests that there might be a deeper evolutionary connection between plants and animals mm. than we previously thought. It makes you wonder if there are other plants out there with similar mm -hmm. capabilities. Maybe even other plants that generate heat or mimic the smells of decay. It, we yeah. might just not have discovered them yet. That's entirely possible. This research is opening up so many new avenues for exploration in botany. Right. And keep in mind, this study focused on just one species, the Titan Arum. Yeah. There are thousands of other plant species out there. Right each with its own unique set of adaptations and survival strategies. It's like a whole hidden world of plant secrets just waiting to be uncovered. Yeah. Speaking of secrets, uh, the researchers also raised some intriguing questions about the corpse flower mm -hmm. that we still don't have the answers to, like right. what triggers the plant to bloom in the first place. Yeah, that's one of the big mysteries. It's not like the corpse flower blooms on a regular schedule. Right. You know, it's this unpredictable event that keeps botanists guessing. Yeah, it really adds to the mystique of this plant. But if we had to guess, yeah. what might be some of the factors that influence when a corks flower decides to put on its big, smelly show? Well, one idea is that it has to do with resource allocation. Okay. These plants put a tremendous amount of energy into producing those gigantic flowers. Yeah. And generating all that heat. Yeah. So they might need to build up enough resources over several years mm -hmm. before they can afford to bloom again. So it's like saving up for a big celebration. Right. You can't do it every year. Yeah. But when you do, you want to make it spectacular. Exactly. And then there are environmental cues that might play a role. Okay. okay. Like temperature, rainfall, or even the length of daylight. Mm. There's still a lot of research to be done to figure out how all of these factors interact. Right. To trigger a bloom. And then there's that other mystery we talked about earlier, yeah. the possibility of synchronized blooming. Right. What would it take to figure out if corpse flowers are actually coordinating their blooms to create an even more powerful olfactory assault? I mean, that would require long-term observation of yeah. multiple corpse flowers growing in close proximity. You'd need to track their blooming cycles over several years and look for any patterns or correlations. So it's like a botanical state out, just yeah. waiting patiently to see if these plants are actually communicating with each other. Right. And if they are, how might they be doing it? Well, we know that plants can communicate through chemical signals. Right. That are released through their roots. Yeah, okay. But for corpse flowers to synchronize their blooms, yeah. they would need to communicate through the air mm -hmm. or even through the soil in a way that we don't yet understand. That would be groundbreaking if we could prove that these plants are capable of that kind of complex communication. Yeah. And beyond just the scientific curiosity, mm -hmm. understanding how plants communicate could have major implications for agriculture. Absolutely. Imagine being able to manipulate those signals right. to control when crops flower. Mm -hmm or to make them more resistant to pests or diseases. That's what I love about botany. Yeah. It's the field that's constantly revealing new wonders and new possibilities, and who knows what other surprises the corpse flower might hold. Mm -hmm. We might just be scratching the surface of its secrets. You know, it seems like with every new discovery about the corpse flower, we just uncover even more mysteries. It's true. Um, before we wrap up this deep dive, I I'm curious to hear more about the potential implications of this research. Okay. Uh, you know, we've talked about agriculture, but are there other areas where understanding the corpse flower's secrets could lead to innovation? What's well, fascinating to consider, isn't it? 
Hmm. Um, one area that, that comes to mind is biomimicry. Okay. The idea of taking inspiration from nature to solve human problems. Right. So, for example, um, understanding how the corpse flower generates heat so efficiently yeah. could potentially lead to new technologies for heating or energy production. That's a really interesting thought. What about those volatile compounds that create the corpse flower's uh, unique aroma? Yeah. Could those have any practical applications? Well, they certainly wouldn't make a very popular perfume. Right. At least not in their current form. Um, but it's possible that by isolating and modifying those compounds, we could create new fragrances or flavorings mm. or perhaps even natural repellents for insects or animals. So the corpse flower could be a source of inspiration for everything from sustainable energy to new scents and flavors. Possibly. That's pretty incredible to think that something that smells so foul could have such potential. It's a great reminder that nature is full of surprises. Yeah. And that even the most seemingly unpleasant aspects of the natural world right. can hold these valuable secrets that are just waiting to be discovered. Mm. And sometimes those secrets can lead to these really unexpected breakthroughs. This deck dive has definitely expanded my appreciation for the complexity and the ingenuity of the plant world. Yeah. What would you say is the most important takeaway for our listeners? I think the corpse flower really teaches us that there's still so much we don't know about the natural world mm -hmm. and particularly about plants. Yeah. You know, we often underestimate their capabilities, mm -hmm. but they've been evolving for millions of years. Right. Developing these incredibly sophisticated strategies for survival. Yeah. And the corpse flower with its elaborate deception, right. its heat generating abilities and its potent stench is a perfect example of that. Yeah. It challenges our assumptions about what plants are capable of. Uh huh. And it inspires us to look deeper to understand the intricate workings of nature. Well said. And for those listeners who are now completely captivated by the corpse flower, yeah. what would you recommend as a next step in their botanical journey? Well, I encourage everyone to seek out these incredible plants in person. Okay. Many botanical gardens around the world cultivate corpse flowers. Right. And witnessing a bloom firsthand is truly an unforgettable experience. Wow. It's a chance to see evolution in action. Mm -hmm. To marvel at the ingenuity of nature. Yeah. And maybe even to hold your nose in awe. That's a perfect way to wrap up our deep dive. A huge thank you to our expert for sharing your knowledge and your insights. Oh, thank you. And to our listeners for joining us on this fascinating exploration. Yeah. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep your minds open to the wonders of the natural world.